All right. Literally, that was part of his speech. Okay, here we go. So, find all points of inflection. What do we do? Uh, to derivatives. First, second derivative. Second derivative. There we go. Okay, so what's first derivative? Um, quotient. quotient rule. <coughs> low D high. High D low. What's D high? D high is uh, X one. Minus I D low. What's, what's X uh, times two X. What's the derivative period. of X squared? Two X. Two X. Period. Divide it by two. Wait, uh, Every time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wait, should we make it X to the fourth? High D low or low D high? It's uh, low D high. Minus high D low. It only matters. So when does we switch the top ones? No, no. It's always bottom times derivative of the top. It, it only matters which one you take the derivative of. D high yeah. means the derivative of the top. Yeah. D high. Yeah. I thought it was low D high. Yeah, it is. Oh so my low god, I finally get it. I'm returning. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm low <laughs> times the derivative of the top is just that times one. I thought low D minus high is just like a low high D high D low. Oh, See what I'm saying? <laughs> so low is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Low. This means bottom times derivative of the top it? minus top times derivative of the bottom. Plus, yeah. Okay, so that simplifies to what? 16 minus x squared over x squared plus 16 quantity squared, right? Now we got to do it all again. Okay. Same drill. Now what? You get messy. <laughs> right? What's the derivative of the top? So we got low D high. Negative 2x. Good. Minus high D low. Yikes. What's D low? You got a chain rule, right? 2 times the quantity. Yeah, 2 hand. Good. Times derivative of hand, 2x. All divided by x squared plus 16 to the fourth. Yeah, you square that, right? Okay, so now what? So we got to clean this up. All right, so in the process of cleaning this up, we can see that we could factor some stuff out, couldn't we? Yeah. Right? We could factor out, it looks like a. We could factor out a negative 2x, how about? Times an x squared plus 16 to the 1. Right? Look for like bases here. Well, there's a like base. Oops, wrong one. There's a like base, right? We can only factor out the smaller, the, the least common power, though, the smaller of the two powers. So we could pull out front of the top an x squared plus 16, and then we could also take out a negative 2x, leaving us with what? So that's gone, and that's gone, right? Everybody with me when I'm, what I'm doing here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then we're left with, from the first term, x squared plus 16. Now what have we taken out over here? We've taken out that, and we've taken out that, right? Does anybody see that? So I, I factored out that negative 2x, making that a positive, and I factored that out, leaving me with plus 2 times the quantity 16 minus x squared all divided by x squared plus 16 to the fourth. 
Okay, so we can do a bunch of stuff to that. We could cancel vertically what? Yeah, good. We can take out an x squared plus 16, top and bottom, because that's a common factor, right? Yeah, but when I say when I accentuate the word factor, right, you understand what I mean there. It's not a term. There are how many factors were there before I canceled that on the top? No. Or on the bottom? On the top, there were how many before I canceled? One, two, three, right? There were three factors on the top. Yeah. I can cancel like factors vertically, so I canceled that factor with one of one factor on the bottom, right? Okay, and then I can, so that helps. I could then simplify inside the brackets, and I'm going to get what? I'm going to get 48 minus x squared. Everybody agree? You got to check me because I'm probably going to make lots of mistakes. Is that right? Yeah, oh, this yeah last that's time. correct. Okay. All divided by x squared plus 16 quantity cubed. Okay? So that's about as good as we can do, I think. Right? It's factored, which is good. Do we want to redistribute? No, not at all. We don't want to redistribute because we're trying to find out where the second derivative transitions, right? So this is my second derivative function. And now we're just going to fill out the, the, the third row of our table, right? We could really skip if we want to. We can just skip the middle two rows and just go right down to f prime. Okay, so if we go back to our original function, what's the domain? All reals. All reals, yeah. How come there's nothing troublesome on the bottom? Ah, oh, it's an x squared. Yeah, it's an x squared plus 16. So x squared is non-negative, isn't it? Right? So if we're adding 16 to that, the bottom is can never be 0, right? So it's all reals. So our domain stretches from negative infinity to infinity. But now we've got to find all the critical numbers for our second derivative, don't we? Right? We want to, we want to find the inflection point. So we already know, well, critical numbers occur where it's undefined or equal to 0. Okay? It would only be undefined where the bottom equals 0, which is never. right? So those are done. But where would the zeros of the top be? Because those are the places where the fraction equals 0. At zero. Okay, so one of them is going to be at 0. The other one is going to be at the 0 of this factor, which is square root of 48. Everybody agree? The top equals zero. When x equals zero or x equals the square root of 48. Okay. Plus or minus the square root of 48. Which is, what's that? Four radical three. Right? We agree? So what do we have to do then? Those are places where those are zeros of the f double prime column to find out if they're inflection points. What do I do? Uh, do a test point between all the values to see yeah. where they switch. Yeah, we need test points. So what would logical values be like on a 1, negative 1, 100, negative 100, something like that? Here's our second derivative function. All we need are the signs. We don't need values, right? So let's just let's evaluate the sign of f double prime at 1. So we're really just going to get how many factors are we dealing with? 1, 2, 3, right? The bottom factor is always positive. Agreed? So really, it's just going to be the, the, whatever the sign rule gives us for the signs of the top two factors. So when x is 1, we're going to get <coughs> negative times positive is negative. 
when x is negative 1, we're going to get positive times positive is positive. When x is 100, we're going to get negative times negative is positive. When x is negative 100, we're going to get positive times Negative. See why? Oh, yeah, because equals, equals negative. Positive, so yeah, yeah. Okay. And so those are all going to be inflection points, aren't they? Right? Oh, and so I guess if they want the actual points, we should have probably left the, the y column, the y row in there, because we'd want to figure out what the corresponding y values are for each of those critical numbers. Where would I go to get those? <laughs> right back up there, right? Okay. I'm too sick to do that part. I don't want to do that part. You guys do that part. Okay, another one. Oh, just good to talk math again. <laughs> okay, so let's just let's maybe look at this one. This is just kind of a qualitative one. Use the graph of the function to estimate where the first derivative and second derivative are zero, positive, and negative. So what do you think? Who wants to help me out here? Maverick, what do you think? Where on this graph, let's talk about, let's do first derivative. Where's the first derivative going to be zero? Estimate. Say it again. Yeah, good. Okay, you at the peak. Yeah, peak. And the valley. Yeah, where we get horizontal tangents. Good. Okay. So we would get zero for the first derivative at about what's that supposed to be? Probably like negative six and oh, sorry, negative five. Is that what that is? One, two, three. Negative five and negative three. Yeah. Okay. On what interval then would the first derivative be positive? Good. Everybody see that? On the interval all the way where it's increasing from negative infinity up to negative 5, and then once again on the interval where x is greater than negative 3, right? And it'd be decreasing. Yeah, not inclusive though, right? So it would be x is greater than negative 5 and less than negative 3. Okay, what about the second derivative? A little trickier. Little trickier. What do we think about the second derivative? Um, equal to zero at negative four. At negative four. Yeah, I'm buying that. Negative four. How come? It's the straightest point. Okay. Well, that's that's where we're shifting concavity, right? You can kind of see here that this is concave down, right? It's shedding water there. Tangent lines. Another way of thinking about that. On this part of the graph, tangent lines sit on top of the graph, right? But over here, tangent lines sit below the graph. Well, where's the transition? Transition appears to be right there. Everybody agree? Everything to the left of that is concave down, to the right of that is concave up. Okay? So we get a zero second derivative at x equals 4. On what interval will the concavity be positive, the meaning positive second derivative. Um, negative 4, 0, negative Yeah, when x is greater than negative 4, right? When is the second derivative negative, aka concave down, when x is less than negative 4, okay? Okay. Uh, this is no big deal, right? I mean, we just know that if this is the position function, velocity is the derivative of position, and acceleration is the second derivative of position or the derivative of velocity, right? If I skip that one.
Okay, let's just talk about this one real quick. So use the derivative of the function. Oh, they're giving us the derivative. Oh, this is kind of good. Let's do this one. Yeah, this is, I like this. Oops. So use the derivative to find all the interesting stuff, local maximum, local minimum, or point of inflection. Okay, so what could we, we, we're not given the original function here, what could we do? We don't, and do they want, I want to just check one thing here, because they kind of, yeah, they didn't, okay, the wording's poor, because they really aren't asking for the points. They're asking for the x values, right? It would have been problematic if they had asked for the points. How come? We don't have the original function. And you guys don't know yet. We're going to learn soon how you can work backwards and, and find the original function. But we don't know that yet. Okay, so we got to just find x values. What are we going to do? This is a good one. So one row is absent from our table, effectively, isn't it? All right. We should be able to still find the, the critical numbers, right? Good. OK, so where are the, what are the, what are the first derivative of critical numbers going to be? One and five. One and five. Everybody see that? How come? Yeah, because those are the zeros, aren't they? If I set that equal to zero, it's not undefined any place, though. So we know, one thing we know is that y prime equals zero when x equals one or x equals five. Good. OK, what else can we do? Because we've got to find a point of inflection, too. So what do you think? Say it again. That's one, that's one that double derivative of zero. When the second derivative is equal to zero, we're on the thumb. Right, so we've got to take a second derivative. Okay, so what are we going to get then? We've got product rule here, don't we? Right, so we've got minus, let's leave the negative one out front. And then we've just got two parts to this in our product rule. Right, so we've got first times derivative of the second, which is. <coughs> Just one, right? Plus second times derivative of the first. Well, by the chain rule, what's the derivative of the first? Two times x minus one times one. There we go. Okay. And so, what could we do then? This is important. How do we want to proceed from here? Do we want to? Multiply those together. Uh, well, you can't. You mean you mean factor it out? Yeah, absolutely. Let's factor it out because think what we're what we're going to think ahead here. You have to think like a chess player. We're going to want to have our second derivative in factored form, right? So any opportunity we can get to factor it, let's do that. Well, I've got common factors. I've got like bases there and there, right? So this is equal to minus x minus 1 times what's left over. Well, here I'm going to get x minus 1 plus, if I distribute the 2, 2x minus 10. <coughs> right? So then we end up with y double prime equals negative x minus 1 times 3x minus 11. I do that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, where are the critical numbers of my second derivative? One. 
minutes. I was like 11 thirds. Okay. So y double prime equals zero when x equals one or 11 thirds. Okay. So now we can make our table. We can skip. We can skip the y row, but everything else should be included. And so our domain is infinite. Agreed. No restrictions. Let's see, we had critical numbers of the first derivative at one and five. So at one and five, we got zeros in that. That row, the y prime row. We got zeros in the y double prime row at one and eleven thirds, which is somewhere in there. So what do we do? We will we can do a test. Okay, so, so what should I do then? Uh, just plug zero and put ten. For the first yeah. derivative or the second derivative? First derivative. Okay. Okay. okay, but we'd always prefer to work as far down the table oh, as right. we can, right? Do you do zero and you can do that for both? Um, you can go all the way down to the one because that will affect the eleven thirds. Yeah. So right, you could. Okay, so we're going to need to pick some test points. Yeah. Let's start off with the one point, the two birds with one stone issue, right? We got this one right here. We can resolve by just a value. We'll use the second derivative test, right? We'll we'll look for the concavity of the function where x equals five. So now we're down here. Are my two factors. When x equals five, what do I get? Negative times positive times positive, right? So negative, and so we get a horizontal tangent, right? And a downward concavity means maximum, okay? All right, so we got one relative max there. But now we need some test points. So let's try, suggestion is, let's try one in between these two. How about like two? Doesn't make it, just any number in between. So let's find the sign of the second derivative at two. I'm going to get negative times positive times negative is positive. So what does that make this guy? Uh, inflection. It's an inflection point, right? Because it's a it's a transition from positive to negative concavity, right? So that's an inflection point. Uh, what if we try negative 10? I'm going to get negative times negative. negative times negative, right? So what's that? Negative. Okay. So we're done. So we got inflection points at 1 and 11 thirds and a relative maximum at x equals 5. Okay. Right, there is no minimum on this one. Yeah. So what's this function going to look like if we this? Well, I just brought that up. So we'll do a quick sketch. It's kind of fun. So there's. What's this thing going to look like? So we're going from negative to positive concavity. And then here's my, here's my, we, we don't know where, you know, we don't know what the function is here, right? So we'll just, this thing's going to be vertically, it's not anchored anymore. We'll get the shape, though. So we're going to get a, a maximum here, right, that's going to be negative concavity everywhere to the right of 11 thirds. But what's going to happen right here? So uh, go down. Something like that. 
I didn't draw that very well, but you get the idea. There's going to be right. Uh, whoops, I got to do it again, don't I? Yeah. I, never mind. So it's right here and right here are going to be changes in concavity, right? So it's going to be concave up to there, but then it's going to become, or concave down, that's negative. Then it's going to become concave up and then concave down again. Right? But there's only one extreme of them, which is right there. Cool. I mean, that's roughly the shape. We need we need a little more analysis to get a better, which we're going to learn how to do pretty quick. The next section actually gives us something else pretty important. But that, that gives us a rough idea. Okay. Oh, man, what else we got here? That looks like more of the same. Okay, looks like more of the same. I think is that all, all the rest of them just out of Larson? Looking out of the book? Yeah. Oh, I know there's one here I wanted to do. Yeah, there's one really good one out of Larson. <coughs> I don't remember which assignment it was on, but the one where you have to fit the values of A, B, C. Remember that one? Let me find it. Uh, where did I put this? So when it says calculus of a SQL variable, mm -hmm. what exactly is multi or multiple? Uh, well, if you're doing if you're doing calculus involving more than well, like so so what we do is calculus in two dimensions, right? Of of curves that are, you know, that are in the, just a, just curves in a plane, the x y plane, for example. What if you wanted to do if you wanted to find, let's say, of a surface, right? You wanted to find the high point on a surface. So now you've got You've got a function of say x and y, right? Z is a function of x and y, and so you've got a three-dimensional topology instead of, right? Instead of just a two-dimensional topology, and so in that case, a maximum would look like what? It'd look like a like a mountain, literally, like like you know when you look at those relief maps, yeah. and and it's it'd look like a mountain looks, right? And then a a, a minimum would look like a divot, right? Okay, that's just one example. I mean, but that's one of the things you would talk about. One of the one of the ways you could expand what we're doing to the next level. It, right. is, is it really super hard? No, no big deal. But it's like college stuff. Yeah. Well, this is college stuff. True. Okay. I think it's in here. Yeah, this is a really cool question. in this version. I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is. Yeah. 
these two up here. So let's let's look at like 73. Okay, this is this is really cool. So how could we do problem 73 where they want you to find the values of of the parameters a, b, c, and d such that this cubic function satisfies those conditions? <laughs> This is good. Find all the points where it equals zero. Or find those points and then multiply them all together. And then you need it. Okay, let's at least talk about this. <laughs> divided by 2a. You're, you're good. Divided by, you always divide by 2a. Right? When all else fails. Okay, so there's our function. What's the significance of a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or an inflection point? Zeros. Zero. Zeros of derivatives, right? Okay. Uh, what's the significance, aside from what those even are, of those ordered pairs? It's where the point is on the right, on the regular graph. Where it's okay. The so so they're, they're values of x and y that work. They're solutions, right? Yeah. So if I take, for example, the point 0.33, isn't the point three three just telling me that uh, the y value f of x is just y that three equals a times three cubed plus b times three squared plus c times three that'd be one of the plus d oh, right so you just have to like write all that out and then figure out what a equals and then put that into a different one okay but but, 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 I'm going to show you a great trick on this. If you guys haven't, yeah, yeah. it doesn't sound like, do you not know the matrix trick for solving linear systems? Uh, I think we, we might have. I think we might have, but, but oh we never gosh. actually used it, so we kind of didn't care about it. How much it. time we got? Four minutes. Four minutes. Oh, okay, remind, we got, this is, this is important. If you guys haven't learned this, this no, is, we, we we learned learned it. this it's is so, we've we, never we, had the opportunity to apply it. Does it apply to the movie at all? It does. When after you know this, you'll be able to just stop time. It's really, <laughs> so you have to wait till next week. But um, or remind me on Monday. Okay, remind me on Monday. Not to remind me. That's I, this is so ironic because I just taught this to my algebra two class today. My honors algebra two class. Why would you like? Why do we learn it in algebra two if we never?